it's Jessica here and in today's video I'm showing how I decorated this album. It's a 49 in market album using the Nature Study Collection. I have another video showing how I created it using the Create an Album collection from 49 in market as well. So make sure to check that if you want to see how I assembled it and keep watching to see how I decorated. I've made quite a few of these 49 in market style albums over the last few years and the decorating is always my favorite part. They have some really cool embellishments that make layering really easy. I use a lot of tickets and tags as well as their laser cuts and rub-ons and I just love layering them up and I think it's so much fun. So I love that that's what I'm focusing on for this video. In the laser cuts there was this magnifying glass and I decided to make it as a magnifying glass looking like it's looking into my photo and so I cut out some cherry acetate which is just a clear strip of plastic and I'm using regular cherry tape to adhere it to this magnifying glass. After I have that complete, I can add some foam dots. The foam dots is optional, but I wanted a little bit of distance between the acetate sheet and my photo, so it looked a little bit more like an actual magnifying glass. And then when I got ready, I'd stick it together. I always like to start embellishing with my cover so that I can use my favorite pieces on the cover. I'm using this frame to frame my title which is Loon Lake because all of the photos in this album are going to be from Loon Lake which is a smallish lake in Michigan that we'll continue having photos from so this is also an album that I will continue to add to so I'm not completely filling it right now. I really like layering up a lot so I am starting to make some clusters. I use some rub-ons on the back to just create some more dimension. I cut out my alphas using some dyes, alpha dyes that had like a wood texture in them and I'm just keeping them all in place by I had a piece of washi tape that I had them stuck to and that just makes it easier to move them around and reposition them so I don't have to reposition each individual letter. Now I'm working on my layering. I like to cluster items a lot, so like when I have a tag, I typically won't just have one. I'll have a section of three. And I'm also adding some ink to my letters just to darken the edges a little bit and help them pop out from the background. In this video, you'll see I stuck these letters on using foam tape but actually after the video I didn't like the look of the white foam so I actually used some brown foam that I die cut out and so I die cut it using the same letters and popped it up that way using brown foam. And you'll be able to see what that looks like more towards the end once I have everything all in place. Now I'm starting to glue things together and I'm more worried about just keeping everything as a clump and gluing it together as a clump rather than gluing it down onto the page. So you can see I've got everything in place before I actually adhere everything onto this page. Now I'm putting on the magnifying glass and because it's popped up a little bit I had to add some foam underneath so it would still be stable. Figuring out what I wanted to do with the cover probably took me the longest time of decorating for this album, but that's because there's a lot of pressure on the cover. It's the thing that most people are going to see most often, and you want it to be eye-catching and make people want to look inside of the book. Now I'm sticking on this part and the cover is complete. Time to get going on the pages. When I have some photos that I know I want to go in an album, I like to just flip through the album and put the photos on the pages where I want them. So this is the only photo I had for this page, so now I'm going to build a layout around it. I'm first backing the photo. I backed all of my photos or I made a frame for them. 
think it just draws a little bit more attention to them and helps them stick off the page as well as makes the layering look a little bit nicer because there's that little bit of separation between the embellishing and the photo. I also distress all my edges on all of my papers as well as my photo crops or I also have just some free pages and I'm just distressing them all. I use a Sizzix distress tool which has been my favorite distressing tool that I use all the time. Now you can see I'm creating a little cluster in this left corner here and I am doing this because I thought that it needed a little bit more balance from the photo in the upper right, so I did this cluster in the bottom left. A lot of creating these clusters is just playing around and seeing what works. I like to use a combination of tickets and words as well as plants and butterflies and other things like that. I also clustered a little bit more around the photo on the top just to make it look like that is also has some clustering around it and it coordinates more with what is in the bottom corner. I have these file essential folders and I use that on this little page here and then I'm also putting in one of these little jars that are from the acetate shapes. Going on to my next photo, it's a little bit bigger of a photo, so it worked using this frame. And I like having the combination of using frames and using just backed photos with paper. And here you can see again, I'm starting to work on my cluster. I'll pull in some different shaped tags as well as um, the, the different tickets and layer them and play around with them until I think it looks good. I like to use uh, some that have different textures and different uh, like ribbing on the edges so some of them are more straight other ones have like the stamp ribbing on it and it just creates a more interesting look when you have all of the different textures something that's really cool about working with these 49 and market papers is I feel like you really don't have to actually do a lot of layering like this page already had a really beautiful background to it so I'm just adding a little bit of clustering around the photo and a title for the page and then I just added some mushrooms on the bottom to make it look like they're coming out from what is actually already on the paper. I typically only will put one photo on a page if it's a really nice group photo like this one is. But most of my photos when making a mini album are a bit smaller and that's so I can fit a lot more in here. I have these pockets on this left page here and I would fill that up with photos. And I'm a scrapbooker that believes any photo you can scrapbook. I don't just put the pretty ones in my scrapbook pages. But if it's not as pretty of a photo, it might get tucked into a folder, like these folder pieces. And, but it's still part of the story and I like to include them. So in my albums, I like to include pages like that that can fit a lot of photos, but maybe hide them if I need. With this green page in the center, I was at first going to try to include all four of these little photos on here, but it just seemed too busy and too much and I wouldn't be able to do the embellishing that I like to do. So I picked my two favorites and am just working with those. I think creating mini albums is my favorite way to scrapbook because you can really tell a story throughout the whole book. and show what photos you want to highlight more and you can hide others. I'm going back to using these mason jars and I really really love them. I think they're so cool but they were a little hard to use because you can't really layer with them because then it just looks too busy but I had this page where it was just a cleaner page with mostly white background and I think they ended up looking really cool here. I again I had something in the bottom right corner so I'm adding balance to the page by putting something in the upper left. Not all of my pages have to be heavily embellished, like that page I just did only had four embellishments on it, and it was good to go. I added this mini waterfall page onto this album because the waterfall pages fit so many photos. You can put photos on the front and the back, and it just fits a lot. 
So here's a finished look at the album. I love the way the acetate that I added picks up the light and it just has a different texture than all of the paper. I have a lot of room still to add more photos and I also added some pieces here and there that I just had in my stash. A lot of the pieces though are still from 49 and Market. Um, like I added some from their toast collection or from the essentials that were in coordinating colors. I like these file folders because again I can add more photos to them. I also think when flipping through a book like this having pockets just makes it a little more interactive and a little bit more fun to flip through. I used some of my other embellishments to create some places to add photos later and I just made sure not to glue those pieces down 100% so I could leave a corner open and add a photo in as I take photos that need to be added in here. And here's a look at the waterfall. I'll flip all the way through it so you can see just how much you can fit in here. This would also be a great spot to add journaling or anything like that or little mementos or you could add pockets in here. There's a lot you could do with this waterfall part. I had a lot of fun making this album. I hope it gives you some ideas and if you want to check how, how I created it, make sure to watch the first video, which I'll link in the description below. Thanks for watching.